Kaichur Radio. Covering Guyana from coast to coast. Demerara and Essequibo 99.1 FM. Burbies 99.5 FM. Kaichur Radio. Kaichur Radio. Keeping you informed. Demerara and Essequibo 99.1 FM. Burbies 99.5 FM. Kaichur Radio. Beaming across the counties of Essequibo, Demerara, and Burbies, this is Kaicho Radio, 99.1 and 99.5 FM. Kaicho Radio, the radio with a difference. It is 13 hours 30 in Guyana and welcome down to a special edition of Elections Watch with senior journalist of Kaitru News, Leonard Gildari, once again at the helm of the program and being a little late this afternoon, his co-host Dr. Yog Mahadio, but no trouble whatsoever. Good afternoon, Mr. Leonard. Good afternoon, dear. Uh, how are you doing, Kevin Smith? And we also have a, a, a good person in the studio here all the way from India and it's no other than Raj, Bhima Raj. He is with us here at Kaichur News, and I want to say a good day to him. He's joining the team, and uh, of course, he's going to be alongside Kevin Smith, and of course, uh, Joshua Van Sleitman has been with us for a little while. And so I want to say good day to those folks, and good day to all, and in a very short while, my co-host, Dr. Yog Mahadeo, will be with us, uh, so we could take you through to the next two hours. Uh, there were no intentions to do any show today. We don't normally do the show uh, elections and COVID-19 on Saturday because that spot has been taken over. However, management has been very kind uh, because of the developments. Uh, we know uh, we've learned uh, over the last couple of days that this weekend is going to be critical to elections 2020. And why is it critical? The recount, which has been more than a month now, is expect to wind up as early as tomorrow, maybe spill over a little into Monday. Uh, where they could do the tabulations and so uh, we were hearing uh, uh, that the timeline is in keeping uh, with uh, what GCOM would have been projecting. Uh, they were giving themselves some like room up to uh, June the 13th and have until the June the 16th to make a declaration, a na national declaration, providing uh, that all goes well. So far we don't see anything uh, other than uh, well. Uh, being uh, on the horizon for us. This morning there was a prayer session at the Art Chunk Convention Center by a coalition representatives. Uh, we're not very clear yet whether they were allowed from outside or whether it was the representatives inside gathered wrong. There was a prayer session. As we know right now, uh, based on what we're seeing, the East Coast uh, remains to be counted within today and tomorrow, uh, various parts, some big areas, uh, which is traditionally uh traditionally been uh the um traditionally been the uh the coalition not the coalition the ppp's uh, uh support base so let's see what uh, would have been uh, coming out of there in the meantime what could i say to you we look straight into the kaicho news front page uh Suriname finally issues vote results showing opposition win you will recall last monday it was not this Monday here, the week before, there was elections in, Trini um, in Suriname or neighbor to the east. And uh, it would, was supposed to be known, it was known very early that the opposition would be uh, probably be taking the presidency. However, that was uh, in doubt for a couple of days as the incumbent president, Desi Bautas, asked for a recount. This obviously or uh, was not granted, and so there was a preliminary um, release of uh, results yesterday, which has shown the the opposition. I think Mr. Santoki, who was a former justice minister, uh, all tipped to to take the presidency, and from all indication, Desi, the incumbent who has been around since the eighties, an army strongman who would have led a coup taken over, ran the country for many years, and then would have won elections, I think, around 2010, area there, 2010. And he would have been there in charge. But you know, there's a big, been a big change in the world. Uh, people are becoming less tolerant uh, uh, to the leaders. Uh, they're not having a lot of patience. So Desi, time is up. That's what Suriname voters have been saying. 
Uh, if you can look to the front page right away, EU releases Damon Election Observer Report. GCOM accused of acting in blatant violation of the law. Uh, cites uh, fair reporting by Kai Chor and Starbuck News. Uh, that was a, a, a report that came out of the EU Observer Team. The biggest, I think several hundreds of them would have been here for the March 2nd elections. And they would have been, uh, of course, calling for a number of things, including reforms at GCOM. Uh, and a, uh, not only that, uh, they wanted the state media to get the act together. They wanted it to be a little more independent and not uh, give so much one-sided report. So the report uh, from the EU Observer team was very, very critical at this point in time. Moving on, PPP lead reconged by more than 16,000 votes. This is as of yesterday, but don't forget that the East Coast is still being counted. The coalition is very upset at the moment. They're saying that there seems to be some collusion between GCOM officials on elections day as well as with the opposition and uh, there would have been some kind of um, collusions to uh, give the opposition uh, uh, votes in that area there. Of course, uh, the opposition is refuting this and saying that if that being the case, it means that everybody, including the police at those polling stations, would have been had to be in cahoots. So we have uh, the next couple of hours is going to be very critical. Um, uh, GCOM has a very big job to do in Guyana. ABC E countries remind Granger and Jack Deal of the recount commitment. What they are saying, there's been, uh, there has been um, growing uh, pressure on the opposition, on uh, the coalition, the incumbent coalition, uh, to uh, recognize what they would have committed to. That is the recount uh, that would have started a month back. And they're saying, recognize the recount results, accept the results, and let us move on and get things going. Claudette Singh refuses to accept Mingo fraud in official observation report. They invite separate uh, submissions from Anog. I understand uh, Dr. Yog Mahadio is joining me at the moment. I want to say, hello, how are you, Doc? Very well, thank you. How are you, sir? I am all rearing to go, and um, I know that you, you had other plans today, including gardening and so on. So I want to say that... Uh, <laughs> I want to say um, hello, and, and I yeah, know that you... <laughs> the gardening has taken a back seat for quite uh, for 90 days now, Leonard, as you and I have been doing these election watch for the past three months, isn't it? Yes, you could say that, and there's a reason for that, Yog. Our people of Guyana, is, they're very important to us. Um, this thing has taken a toll on everybody. You, me, we have had, had to put everything uh, aside, our normal everyday business. Me reporting has gone into a backseat because we have to bring the news to the people. We have to bring the views of the people. We have to allow them to have their say for us to try to have an understanding so we could never ever have a repeat of it. So this is very critical time for us and we've been doing it for almost three months now. It has been yep. it has been enjoyable for me in terms that I was able to uh, meet the people. Um, I was never a radio person. I was never a radio person in terms of it's only last year I did some interviews and this year I've been in it almost every day, a single day. Um, do I need training? Yes. Did I meet uh, a lot of people? Well, uh, I really enjoyed uh, meeting my people, and you would you would see that there's a lot of patriots in this country. Yo. So I want to say thank you very much for that. It has renewed my commitment uh, uh, to my love for this country. And of course, having you as my uh, compadre, my co-host, has been uh, an awakening in terms of I've learned so ma many things. So I want to say thank you very much for that. And I know you have some remarks. Last night was a wonderful show in terms of uh, room 592 with uh, Jerry Govaya, Captain Jerry Govaya of the Private Sector Commission, and of course, uh, Nick uh, Dego Boyer. Both of them are executive, big executive, big businessmen who would have been given the take on the impact of elections 2020 on Guyana, and of course, COVID-19. And you know, at the end of it uh, was something, I received so many calls last night and this morning again, the fact that we, you would have offered, uh, you know, a prayer for this country. We do indeed need uh, the prayer and seeing the prayer done at the conference center this morning. I think there's a recognition that we do need healing. But of course, I know that you are more concentrated on my green t-shirt uh, today. <laughs> so we could talk about that too. Over to you, Yog. 
Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I was wondering whether you joined the, the, the team at the Artichon Convention Center this morning. Um, I've seen a team there. Um, I don't know if they were offering prayers or what, but I'm certainly hoping that yes, prayers would have been the order of the day. Um, I was a little aggrieved that no consideration was being given for social distancing and, and you know, COVID-19 kind of thing. But um, I wish to, Leonard, just before we start, I wish to appeal to, uh, they got some of the fake uh, profiles. I've hit the profile of Mr. Rahim Rahman. It's a fake profile and he's here just abusing and cursing, sir. You're a disgrace to your party. I see you have our very good and very honorable Mr. David Granger as the head of your page. And you are a disgrace to that page and that picture of your president. So you should you should do the good thing and, and, and run along. Run along and drink some more Kool-Aid if you wish. To our viewers and listeners, please do not let us not use these uh, incendiary uh, comments being made by certain opportunistic leaders to divide and split us up. We have a country, we have children in this country, and as a people, we have to rise above everything else and put things aside. Um, the other thing I'd like to quickly mention, Leonard, today is, is the penultimate day. By tomorrow this time, hopefully, if all goes well, the recount ought to be finished. And then you and I from Monday will not be on elections watch, we'll be on, on a results watch after that. So um, the paradigms are quickly, quickly changing, and we need to ensure that everybody stay calm, stay cool. And I wish to appeal to all the leaders, Leonard. It's not a time to drum up fears. It's not a time because Mr. Granger has clearly said whatever Justice Claudette Singh declares, he is going to accept. Mr. Jagdeo has clearly spoken on behalf of his political party. And Brothers and sisters, you and I can go dancing down the road to whatever train we want. At the end of the day, the two leaders have made a statement and let us allow those statements to guide our conscience and our actions for the next couple of days. Absolutely, Yoga. And let me tell you this. If you would have seen, uh, looking at the Kaichor News uh, today, there's been growing numbers. Uh, look, let's look at the Suriname, um, the Suriname uh, news that's coming out there. Suriname finally issues uh, vote results. There's a preliminary vote results showing opposition uh, won. I think St. Kitts, I think there was elections last let yesterday, me, last evening, and I think you could tell us yeah. a little more about that. Let, let Already me tell you about that, because we, we sent off, a group of us would have sent off congratulations to... Um, the winning party in Suriname, they held, as you know, they had a little bit of problems in their own elections. And I think uh, what we are learning, uh, Leonard, is that uh, they have now exploded in terms of COVID. They have a total lockdown in Suriname now. So that's a lesson we need to take and be very careful of and with. On the other hand, we also sent off, a group of us sent off congratulations to Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris and Team Unity. St. Kitts and Nevis, ladies and gentlemen, they had elections yesterday. And at this time today, the winner has already come out and gave a victory speech. And everybody's happy and they're carrying on with their lives. That was yesterday. And today, the winner is already um, um, long gone. In his, uh, in his victory address, the Prime Minister said, we thank tremendously the people of St. Kitts and Nevis for a resounding victory. Um, and, you know, they've basically moved on and it shows maturity. Here, we have both uh, stakeholders, main stakeholders saying that they're going to await the declaration of Claudette Singh. Yet, we have the, the, the Kool-Aid sharers and the Kool-Aid drinkers that's, that's making a mess of the country and the people of Guyana. And the world is looking on, on, on social media. We have people here, Leonard in our, and we wish to say hi, we got people joining us from Mexico, from Norway, from Ireland, from the U, from, from um, England, from the US, from, you know, all over the world, literally part of our viewership online. And of course, all across Guyana, our, our listenership. And, you know, people are looking on at what's going on in Guyana. And we need to be very careful because I'll say this, Leonard, regardless of how Mr. Joe Harmon or Mr. Anil Nandalal, or any one of them speaks to the media, the world has been watching on from March the 2nd, and you can spew all kinds of political speech you want, gentlemen. 
the world has been watching on the world has seen for itself what has transpired and what continues to transpire over these elections and so we don't need to be told what's happening we are aware of it and leonard Kaito Radio and Kaito New deserve some kudos, and that has been brought out by the, the Observer Mission Report. Yes, um, indeed, Yog, I, 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 let me tell you something. We've been saying it, I've consistently said it over the last couple of days, the last couple of weeks. There's a reason, I don't know of any other way of doing it except uh, putting it to the people exactly as it is. They can't, there's no two sides of the truth, there's one truth. Full stop. Wherever the chips fall, let it will. And and the other thing is we don't have, a, I'm going to repeat it here, we don't have a constituency that we cater in for. We have the people of Guyana that we have to answer to. And they are going to be very cruel towards us. They're going to be very brutal if we don't do our jobs. And the mere fact, you look at the Kaichur News, 146,000 online. We've been doing 150, 200,000, you look mm -hmm. at it, these are people who are logging in. Does that mean that they're boycotting us? Why, why is it that you should boycott us? We have 80%, let me say it again, you wanna hear figures? Uh, there's a figure that is 80% of our staffers are not East Indians. Correct. They come from All Boy Song, they come from around here. Glenn, I'm gonna try to get Glenn Nalo into this program, maybe sometime, he's very shy of the radio. But guess what? He's probably going to tell you a little about the figures, but it's not about Kaito News, it's not about Kaito Radio, it's about the people of Guyana. We're going to be opening the lines because we want to hear from you. We want to hear what is happening because this is all about you. We, we wanted the, you know, this morning, uh, Yoga was writing my column. I won't call it a column, I'll call it a piece. Um, and I'm, I'm really conflicted. Our country is at a crossroad at the moment. What are we fighting for? What is it that we want? We have one of the biggest oil finds in the world. Let me repeat that. One of the biggest oil finds in this region in the last couple of years. Guess what we did? We've taken our eyes off the ball with that and we have allowed a few politicians, a few leaders to dictate to us what we should be thinking. We should be thinking, should I not have a mortgage to pay this month? Should I have a better pension. Why can't I have a pension by 50 years? Stop working because there's so much oil is out there. Why can't we have a better deal? Why can't we use this uh, opportunity that we have with COVID-19 to strike a better deal with uh, ExxonMobil? But guess what? Nobody, not one of the politicians, we're not hearing anybody talking about COVID-19. We're not talking right. about what's happening to those folks that's out there that's scrambling for a living, maybe can't put a, 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 a meal on the table. York, these are important things. Every day, if you see the number of calls, and I'm sure it's the same thing for you, the number of calls that comes to my phone, the number of texts, uh, I, I think if I was less tough, it would be tears every single day. It is very painful, very, very painful. So let's get the show on the road. It's all about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And you're right. It is painful. And what is extremely painful, Leonard, is that these elections have shown how much a lot of the politicians of Guyana are blatant opportunists. They would do anything and everything for power, not to help people, because guess what? For 90 days, none of the people of this country were helped by the politicians, those in power. None. All of the big uh, hullabaloo, all of the big parties that were held before elections, not one cent was thereafter directed to help the people of this country. It has been rank, blatant opportunism. And I was shocked yesterday for an old man, an old man like Moses Nagamotu, day before yesterday, an old man like Moses Nagamotu, that will forever be etched into the history books of Guyana to criminalize the people of Guyana the way he did. I am shocked and I believe that I'm going to, I'm going to lodge a complaint with the authorities because the prime minister, so-called prime minister of this country, in one statement criminalized people of this country. Those are the kind of things that I and I urge people, never forget, never forget some of these politicians 
Never forget the Jim Jones of our history that fed 900 and something people Kool-Aid and laid them down to die. Never forget these people who want to be modern day pipe pipers that are gonna make people walk off the cliff. I, and I, you know, Leonard, it is, it is true. I've reported the same Rahman guy to Facebook this morning. I'm going to report another gentleman that has posted some crap from England. Imagine, they're not living in this country. Neither is Rahman living in this country, you know. They're not living here. They're not suffering. They're not feeling what we are feeling for the past 15 years in this country with irresponsible governments, with corrupt governments and corrupt leaders. They're not feeling it. But they want to tell us how we must accept and how we must drink Kool-Aid. And sir, that is not going to be acceptable for the people in this country. There are always going to be misguided few that are going to fight to the end because of their loyalty, and they're going to continue to be the cheerleaders. They're not going to be leaders. Well, uh, it is very, very simple. The people are not stupid. I think we have said this before. They have a mind of their own. And when you come out and you say things, they're able to analyze. They're mature people, and they're able to analyze it, and they're able to cut it down to what it is to the to to the bottom, and they're able to analyze and make some conclusions about the people that that talk those nonsense. With regards so to, Leonard, I want to ask you this though: Have you seen? Um, are you getting some sibl- subliminal message? Are you making a declaration with the color of shirt you're wearing, sir? Yes, I'm making a declaration <laughs> that I'm for all Guyanese. In fact. Let me make a, a um, statement now. Today, I'm APNU. Tomorrow, I'm PPP. The next day, I'm going to be ANOG. So I'm going to wear the party colors. Statement well, you there. You comfortable uh, with that? Uh, as we say in Guyanese, using Creole, is you try the I ain't joining no political party. Not now. But I want, I'm, over the next three years, I'm going to carefully, and I'm encouraging everyone, these are the testing times. These 90 days have shown us who really care for Guyana. And the next two to three years will show us, whichever, whoever forms the government, how they really care for Guyana. And if they don't, we boot them. So, York, there's, uh, uh, I, I must do some housekeeping here. Bollywood tune. Everybody normally tune into Kaito Radio on Saturday uh, mm-hmm. around this time here. We pushed it back because of how important it is, this elections for Guyana from 3.30 to 5.30, so don't think that we have abandoned uh, our very um, loyal uh, followers with Bollywood Tune, very popular program. We're going to be on with you at 3.30. Uh, with regards to, um, uh, I saw somebody call, keep calling me and people sending me message, Joseph Harmon leaving today. I'm not sure about that, and even if he's leaving, so what? Um, uh, if he's leaving... I presume it's got to be some state business or whatever it is, but he should answer. I think there's a critical time now for the coalition, for the People's Progressive Party, and for all others. I'm not sure such a senior official is uh, uh, is supposed to be leaving, and we shouldn't read anything into it. Uh, are you saying the same thing, too? People are asking you? Well, people have asked me. People have forwarded me copies of purported uh, um, reservation and stuff like that, and you know what? I mean, let's 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 just take a back step. As you and I would would certainly agree. You know, we take a a, back, a step back on it and say, okay, Mr. Harmon got to travel. Then, you know, who cares? And 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 he has a right to conduct and look after his business and his other interests. Um, that's certainly within his right. And I guess he knows what he's doing. Um, if he is indeed traveling, that means it means I say this tongue in cheek. It means we may very well see some statements coming out of JJ and BLLC very soon. <laughs> well, I don't know about that and the significance of that. <laughs> what I could tell you is that GCOM today is supposed to meet uh, meet with regards to a critical decision um, in terms of... There were several boxes yesterday that had issues on it, uh, Yog, um, mm-hmm. with regards to documentation, and they decided to set aside... And GCOM said uh, it would have met today because not uh, having a recount on it, not having a recount on it is going to be an issue uh, for the final total. So you can't have a whole bunch of voters being disenfranchised because that's in actuality what you're doing uh, because of a few missing books. So GCOM is to decide that today. And those boxes are in the heart of the PPPs or what would have been described as the PPP stronghold on these coasts there. Do we have any indications whether GCOM would have met 
and if so what are the decisions and and maybe we could probably discuss uh, what was the implication of those boxes Correct. not being counted but Leonard, let's put some things in perspective these recounts are not counting any other votes than what Mr. Mingo and the other returning officers attempted to declare earlier. There is no new elections that were held. These recounts sought to verify, to add credibility to a March 2nd process, right? These, I want to make sure we understand this thing. This is not a recount of something new that was probably uh, you know, airdropped into Guyana from, from somewhere deep space. These results are the ballots. The ballots remain the same ballots that GCOM had in its possession from March 2nd. The same exact ballots. The same exact ballots, APNO AFC, that refused to release their SOPs were happy to accept the grossly inflated numbers declared by Mingo. Those same ballots that Mingo did not declare or did declare are being recounted. Nothing new, nothing new. The same agents that Mr. Bond and APNU AFC embraced at the end of elections for job well done. It's the same agents and the same ROs and the same personnel all across this country, you know. Nothing changed. What has happened is, I believe, and I sincerely believe, in an effort to thwart the will of the electorate, one group of people have thrown their own agents under the bus, have destroyed them, have have destroyed their credibility. In fact, Mr. Bond is on record saying that 80% of the APNO AFC agents have colluded with somebody and have defrauded these elections. 80% of APNO AFC people, therefore, voted for PPP. Why are you still claiming you win these elections? If 80% of your own people are on the other side, something has to really be wrong with this argument. Now, to your specific question, Leonard, as of yesterday, Lowenfield would have instructed the tabulation room to put aside the boxes that did not have the necessary documentation within the boxes. We have seen signed and sworn statements emerging from yesterday of persons who manned those, those uh, polling districts saying that they were instructed by the DRO as to what to do with their, with their documents. There are so many questions now prevailing as to what a group of GCOM persons were doing in the Ashman building. Video has them opening and sealing envelopes. What were they doing is the question we have to ask. This is why I said at the top of the program, the world has been watching on. You can change the narrative all you want, gentlemen and gentle ladies, but people has been watching on. And Golding said it right. This is the most transparent attempt ever made to rig these elections because everybody is seeing what's going on. Finally, I'll say, Leonard, those ballot boxes at, at East Coast Emirara, they have been put aside they, they were, I believe, my own information as of yesterday afternoon, there were about eight boxes that have been, the tabulations were put aside, that GCOM will today meet to decide whether to allow them in the final count or not. Now, remember, if GCOM decides not to allow the disciplinary services or not to allow these boxes or not to allow um, voters votes to be counted because of malfeasance or malpractice or bad practice of their own agents, GCOM is basically kicking the citizenry aside, say, to hell with your votes because we screwed up. And that is another discussion, my friend, because that is a serious, very serious statement for them to be making if they will make such a statement. 
absolutely there, Yog. And so we will, in a very short while, open the phone lines. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you wherever you are, whether it's in Crabwood Creek, whether it's in Pomeroon, whether it's in Wayaka in the Lake Main area there. Escrib, I want to say a, a big hello to the Escrib people there in the region. Five people on the East Bank, a good day to you in Diamond. We have a very um, uh, big birthday girl today, been a big follower of Kaichur News, and I want to take this opportunity. We don't normally do it, Yog, but she has been every day. Good day, gentlemen. How are you doing? Elizabeth Sunich. I think she's celebrating her birthday. This is a policewoman who's now retired and she has been in it. So I want to say hello to you, uh, Elizabeth. A good day to you and a happy birthday to you. May you enjoy the rest of the day. From the people down at Kaicho Radio, Kaicho News, and everybody who's looking. And if you celebrate your birthday and we don't know, enjoy your day. So, Yog, uh, 226-7453, 226-7453. And, of course, send the WhatsApp uh, that you would want us to probably read on here. Keep it within taste, very short. Six triple two triple two, six triple two triple two, And, of course, you could call us on 226-7453. I think there's a caller already online. Good afternoon, caller. You're in the air. Hi, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, sir. How is everything? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, I thank you all for keeping me updated by this country. And here, uh, if the PP goes here, in, I had some issues with them. So them is no better than these other people. And I want you all to look at them too. If them swear in, I want you all to keep it up. Now you must fight it. Who do bad, kick them out. And you take care, buddy, right? Thank you very much oh. for that. Well, I could speak on behalf of Kaichur uh, newspaper. We, in 2015, leading back, and if your memory would serve you right, our job, our mandate was to report the news. And, uh, of course, coming on the fire then was the People's Progressive Party, Civic, which had been in power for 23 years. They lost that elections. In 2020, the shoes is on the other foot. Um, the coalition would have come under a lot of um, a lot of criticisms. I don't think if let's assume that there's a swearing in and the PPP go back in there, that they're going to have any kind of honeymoon period. You believe that, Yog? I think the people are less tolerant with oil and everything. They would want the next government, whichever. If it's a coalition come back again, I don't think anything will change. The people will do their job. Uh, the newspaper, the media is going to continue uh, their scrutiny and tight scrutiny okay. of the government of the day. It is only, it is what they do. It's a mandate. Correct. Correct. And Leonard, you know, I mean, let, let, let's take this opportunity. Just take, let's take a step back, ladies and gentlemen. Look, the doctors and the hospitals are going to continue to work. Regardless of who swears in, you know, you and I will continue to get headache and foot ache and high blood pressure and all of that, maybe a little, little less scale after this election is over. Life will go on regardless of who swears in. The doctors are going to continue doing a fantastic job as they are doing. And we need to probably have another show after these elections to assess public health itself, uh, Leonard. But ladies and gentlemen, your life is going to go on. The doctors are going to continue to do their great job. The minibuses are going to continue to do their great job of transporting us all back and forth from our work. The employers and the employees are going to continue doing everything that they have to do. The only people, ladies and gentlemen, that will be affected are the 65 people in parliament, the people who are forming the boards, the people who are state employees. And the contractors. What's wrong with you, man? And maybe, and yeah, the contractors and maybe the bank accounts of various persons will be directly affected. But don't let us get down the wrong road, ladies and gentlemen. After these elections are called, life must go on for you and I, the ordinary citizens in this country. And we have to ensure that never again must we allow a corrupt government to be corrupt and remain in office for any length of time. We must call them out and speak out. And ladies and gentlemen, I say something else to you. If you have a pothole in your road, it is your right to speak out. Don't say because it's one party in power, this must not, you must not speak out. It is our right 
to protest. It is our right to speak out. It is our right to also praise when governments do good. And we must ensure that we remember after all these hullabaloo gets over, all of, after all these elections, we are going to go back to work. We're going to get back into the stick and things of things. And we must remember, unless you and I get together as a united Guyana, Exxon is going to continue to burn up our gas. The environment is going to continue to go down the drain. So let me get this act. Let me get this show on the road, as Leonard would say, and move on from these elections very quickly. Thank you very much. Uh, there's another caller online. Yes, good afternoon, caller. You're on the air. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good, good afternoon, afternoon, sir. You. Good afternoon, Leonard. Good afternoon, sir. I think Glenn Lal really deserves a national award for the human job he's doing to preserve democracy and to bring out the riggers and the, the ones who want to destroy our country. But anyway, I voted for APNU AFC in 2011 as well, in the AFC in 2011, APNU AFC in 2015. And as a patriot guy, you want to change. Right? I'm an Indian, by the way. Right? So this nonsense that Indians don't vote against, that is nonsense. But anyway, one of the reasons I voted against him is because he gave away our oil to Exxon Mobil. How can ex American oil workers from Texas come into working on oil rigs in Guyana, working for thousands of US dollars, paying no taxes in Guyana? A worker sweeping in one of the government buildings have to pay taxes. How can he not pay taxes? Not talking about the 2% royalty. Right? Burnham was a nationalist. Bono for all his bad ways, Bono was a nationalist. Bono would have never given away the oil to 2%. That is a junkie deal. Bono would have never done that. Okay? So that is one of the reasons also why I voted against Apno AFC. They gave away our natural resources, plus they gave control to ExxonMobil. And I keep thanking Kaichi News every day for exposing all the shenanigans with ExxonMobil, exposing all the bad deals all the way. Exxon Mobil has bought governments all over the world, and they have bought Exxon. They have bought up New AFC also. They have hundreds, they have decades of buying governments, right? But to, for up New AFC, think they can get away this in the 21st century? Anybody knows two percent royalty. That is not a bad deal. That is a corrupt deal. The EATA or in Guyana, Guyana ITA says it's either a, the most corrupt deal or the most armed thing. But everybody knows it's the most corrupt deal. Because nobody gives away your country for nothing. You sell out your country, but I mean, to be fair to them, it's not a Guyana sickness, it's a third world sickness. Third world governments around the world sell out their natural resources, sell out their people for money. And that is what APNAC did, and that's why they deserve to be in opposition. That's it, Carlo. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. You guys have a good one. Thank you very much there. I think you were right on the button with that one there. You know, Yog, um, that is something I received. We have received uh, some criticisms uh, uh, of the decision to allow flights into Guyana. It was decided that uh, Exxon is a uh, critical, essential uh, service to Guyana and that they shouldn't close it up. We have closed our airports and yet we have allowed uh, several flights bringing in and taking out workers of Exxon in and out the country. Um, and, but we've closed the door and uh, there was a lot of talks about bringing back Guyanese who would have been over there. One of the questions that came up, who was looking to see what kind of checks are being made uh, uh, on the workers that are coming in to see whether they have met the criteria of COVID-19, those um, restrictions. Mm -hmm. But not only that, we're blocking off our roads every evening. You go down on these bank around by Magdum there. And you could see the police, one police has been put, or a couple of policemen there, to guide the traffic, to stop the traffic, to allow trucks for ExxonMobil to continue. Go down Regent Street, all the business places have, have been closed. So people have been complaining, where is uh, the level playing field when it comes to doing business in Guyana? Oil versus uh, our normal thing. We could see um, people are just milling about doing what, what they should be, what they, what they are doing in normal times. They, they are wearing, not wearing the mask. So we could talk about not paying attention. But at the end of the day, Yog, there seems to, to be as if Guyanese become, uh, Guyanese have become a second class citizen in their own land. Correct. Some of the decisions does not make logical sense. Correct. It's, 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 
it, it doesn't equally apply to everyone. There, there's one rule for some and, and one rule for others. And, um, you know, we continue to have the same kind of thing over and over. I mean, the airport, the airport thing is, is, is quite a disgrace. Um, and I keep saying so, Leonard, and I'll say it one more time. What else can you expect from Nagamoto and his compadres when you have a bunch of politicians heading a national health crisis? What, let me repeat that one more time. What else will you expect when you put a bunch of politicians, poor politicians at that, to head a national health crisis? That's what we get. We have groups of persons, and I must say this because the comparison is glaring. You have a bunch of people gathering there. I don't know if they're protesters or what. They're gathering there, all in close proximity with each other. No masks, nothing. The police is looking at them and leaving them by. But there were other people who were marching six feet apart from each other, and they were, they were detained. So the rules doesn't seem to apply equally to all. The other thing that I want to quickly mention, Leonard, Across this country, I find that there is something, I, I, I mean, pardon me for speaking on this, but I'm hearing pastors and pundits and, and, and so forth are being locked up when they, when they officiate. The, the pastors and the pundits are not, are not calling people to come out. Uh, the people should all be equally held responsible. Why are you jailing? Why are you detaining the, the pastor or the pundit or the, the maulana or imam? It, you know, this situation is becoming, I don't know. And, and, and one has to ask what guides the authorities and the, and the police to, uh, to arrest some people only. Because it obviously does not apply to everyone. There's a weakness in the system. There's another caller in line. Good afternoon, caller. Okay, so if you're not joining us, it's a special edition. Yes, good afternoon, sir. Go ahead. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, sir. For all the weeks that I said I told you so, it was not to be ironic. It was to make a point. Every action has a reaction. And the only justified act, react, action that occurred somewhere in March when those police came and put everybody out of Chicom's building was to do something. And I could only assume that those books that are missing was writing that building because we are at Region 4, and that's where most of the problems that they come up with happen. Secondly, when it comes to Exxon, Exxon caught, caught some people that were inexperienced and took advantage. In business, it may have some business logic, but it's unethical. What can we do about it? I do not know. What I believe, and based upon what one of the opposition, the opposition leader, I think himself, says we can make sure that we get a lot of local content, make sure they enforce that, make sure we get money coming to Ghana to buy products from Ghana, and that is what is good. I like to also say to my fellow Guyanese, based upon something that Mr. Yoke said earlier, since March the 2nd, I have deleted people from WhatsApp and Facebook and even my personal account that I saw exhibited certain narratives on Facebook. And I don't even talk to them. They passed me and I wave my hand because I have respect to people. And I have come to a place in Guyana. I don't care what color you are, what race you are. Anytime you're exhibiting racial actions or unreasonable or unsensible actions, I am leaving you in car. If I got a standalone sociality, as it relates to our John Convention Center and what is going on there, I could only hope, I would like Chicom to hear this message that I'm going to say now. As a part of the electorate, we are not interested in an audit. An audit has to do with what's missing from the box. As the electorate, it is my right to make long, as long as my vote is in the box, for it to be counted. All the other papers that are missing, that are a GCOM, house cleaning matter, that they will have to deal with. I have nothing to do with that as an elector and a part of the electorate. What it matters to me is my vote in the box. As long as my vote is in the box, that is what has to be counted. And they can check the law and come back to me and tell me something otherwise. All the others is GCOM house cleaning. Let me deal with that afterwards. Thank you very much. I'll leave your comment up here. Thank you very much there. And and you're right. Uh, this this oil thing ain't going to leave us for a little while. You did ask the question, so uh, what can, can we do about it? There's a couple of things on the table uh, that you could look at. You have to get to uh, think in the past this would have been discussed. And Yog is probably a little more familiar with this issue. 
a man that has a business in your country has to come to you for uh, maybe uh, permits, environmental permits and other things. You could use that while uh, the, the, the contractors on the table might be sacrosanct, sacred or whatever you want to call it. At the end of the day, there's so many things that you could do to introduce a better deal for the people of Guyana. Not only that, there are bilateral arrangements, uh, this country to country, a whole entire country, if you make a comparison, what would have been the norms across the world as to what Guyana would have gotten. There's some ethical arguments that could even be put into place. So there are many ways that you could go and argue for a better deal, including local content, uh, ensuring that your people get a bigger thing of the pie. But uh, accepting a bill for $3.5 billion for the forest phase without even lifting an eyebrows and asking, you know, how are you really spending this $3.5 billion? Um, did I get a good deal? Um, are you overcharging me? Without checking and approving that, uh, that uh, expense for the forest phase, you have an issue if the authorities are not checking properly. So many questions. There's a lot of solutions. So maybe quickly, uh, Yogi, you could probably delve into some of that. Well, yeah, just just quickly to say that, um, uh, you know, look, with regards to what's happening at the Artisan Convention Center and this recount and, and those boxes and, and everybody's concerned about it. And let me just uh, segue quickly to say that um, an update is that police has moved in and uh, has uh, broken up that group of persons that were assembled in front of the Artichon Convention, well, in the proximity of the, the center there. Um, that uh, group has now been broken up. Thank you. Police has done a great job there. I don't know if any arrests have been made, but we haven't seen any reports. <laughs> Excuse me. Coming back to this thing, Leonard, the, the big story of the day continues to be that there are boxes, and the caller is right, that there are boxes that does not have the documents in it. The big story of the day is that one of the persons who was manning a polling division made a statement to say, hey, GCOM, you called me and instructed me to not put the documents in the box. That is a statement, right? Um, so that is something that I see that uh, Mr. Paul Jaisin, one of the DRO for District 4, has written to the chairman of the Guyana Elections Commission on the issue and he was responsible for polling stations at Chateau Margo Primary School on the East Coast MRRs. And he's claiming in a written statement that instructions were given by one Carlin Duncan, clerk to the returning officer of Mr. Clayman Mingo, to include only unused, valid, and rejected ballots in the boxes. So obviously, these people were given instructions. Now, remember... APNO officials uh, have said that the agents, uh, you, you know, they, 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 don't, uh, they don't own the Asia agents for their goodwill and good work anymore. So, Leonard, this throws a lot of things into spin. Bottom line, though, bottom line is that the votes must matter. You cannot penalize the, the voter for your deficiencies. You cannot penalize the voters unless let me say this unless the mark of the voter is a clear breach of the procedures unless the ballot itself is spoiled you cannot disenfranchise the voter you have just taken a new law into your hands if you choose to do so well we will we will be paying very close attention to that yoke and let's see what develops in the next couple hours but uh, if you're not joining us this is Kaicho Radio 99.1, 99.5 FM. You can get us on Kaicho News Online as well, my Tuna app and my Radio Garden app. And of course, uh, we are on YouTube as well, Kaicho Radio. So you could join us in that. 2267453. You could WhatsApp us, 62222. I'm going to ask Kevin in a little short while to maybe go through some of the messages. We could probably read it. But there's another call online. Yes, good day. Good day, caller. Good You're here. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. You're on the air. Yes. I, I just want to say a few things. I have worked with elections on March 2nd, and I can attest to the fact that I had a call from the upper authorities, and they said, do not put certain documents within the box. And we had the training that said you should put those certain documents within the box. When we had the instruction not to do that, 
I was baffled. But what could I have done? Nothing to go with instructions, right? Secondly, right, the biggest investment the government, whichever government we are in, could make is to invest in the educational system for this nation. Because when you become a person of education, it's, it's really hard to fight against your own nature and go against logic. And I've been speaking with some people, and, and they, they're just they're zealous, but they, they don't know what they're zealous about. When they're defending the, the ignorance of, of, of certain government, specifically, I must say, APNU, when you look at it, the picture is clear, right? But you, you speak with them and you can see that they're just misinformed and uneducated. So I think when every government goes into, into the power, they should really invest in education for this nation. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zir. And Yog, before, I, I know this is a pet topic of yours, but let me say something. We could have all the systems in place. If you're instructing your people to do something that is contrary to that, the boss is telling his employee to do that. Although they may know that is is not legal, it might not be what they were told or what they were trained to do. How good is the system if you're not following it? That's my question to you. Mm -hmm. And, and Leonard, I, I thank that gentleman for calling in because that's exactly what this nation needs. The people who were involved, who were employed by GCOM in this process to run these elections, ladies and gentlemen, do not allow yourself to be so insulted by the politicians. Stand up and speak out. If you do not stand up and speak out, you are becoming part of the problem because you are allowing wrongs and lies and mischievousness to be spread and hate to be created. You ladies and gentlemen that man those polling stations and were agents, this is the time if ever before for you to stand up and declare the truth and let us know, let the Guyanese population know exactly what took place because we cannot trust the words coming out of, of, of the cheerleaders. And there was a um... But we, we will talk about it a little. I, I'm mulling it in my head. I saw a threat to a candidate within one of the new parties. Um, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a very nice thing reading. And I saw uh, the response from that candidate to the person. It's obvious that somebody set up a fake account and threatened that, 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 that candidate. But we're going to come back. It was one of our guests a few days back, Yogi. Um, but there's another caller online. Yes, good afternoon, caller. You're yeah. here. Yes, good afternoon, caller. You're on the air. Hi, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, sir. Um, here we go again. You know, and I keep saying this from the beginning, and I think everybody knows this. The person that have us all in this cuckoo is Claudette Singh. And I'm calling really because last night, a good gentleman on your program, Mr. Jerry Gavai, was saying that some of his colleagues in the private sector commission would not agree with him when he said that he still believe she have a credibility. Mr. Jerry, I know you, and I'm telling you, she is. We have to accept over and over again, and he's saying we have to accept, we have to call a spade a spade. She is the reason we are where we are. Because when Mingo was doing his kulubungu, the PNC said they win the election. They were ready to swear in twice. They didn't have a problem with all of these things, you know. All of a sudden, these box got the problem. If she the only stand up that day and do the job that you money, me money, and your money, and all of we taxpayers' money pay she to do, and then the Constitution empower her to do, and she had done it, we wouldn't have got this nonsense going on. And secondly, I know they're gathering there, and I'm telling you this now, Gil, because I lived through 97, 92, 2001, 2006, 2011. Every time the TPP win an election in this country, there is a problem. My only question now, and my way to now, is when they're going to come to Regent Street, and Tian Street, and Rob Street, and them place, and do the nonsense. The PNC is going to go out with a bang. They are not taking this lightly. They are going to go out with a bang. Because, as the college just say, educate your people. We got people who educate, but it's just some of them don't want to accept 
when you could have a senior minister, a minister, you know, telling people, the whole world see it on the internet and everything, that he dared get up and go and vote and then go back and lay down. Well, you know why I want to say, I'm hoping to see already that if the dead were already dead, could be against the Granger administration. What about me? What about me? Who is alive? Gentlemen, keep this. I'm listening all the time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear caller. And we could quickly read some of the comments that we would have been sent to us on our WhatsApp, 62222. Good evening. Uh, could you highlight who is in the the winning of the election, which is the PPP? So you're talking about swearing in, you can't say whoever, when everyone knows it's the PPP that won. We're going to be very um, uh, careful here on this program. We can't. Uh, we don't want to uh, light fire when, when we can, there's a recongress ongoing. Let the authorities, GCOM is going to make it. What we could do is bring you the news or bring you highlights as to what is happening and talk about that with regard to saying that the PPP outright win. Uh, I don't. I think you're onto the wrong show. Um, we're not going to do that. It is. It is not a, an advice. Uh, it's not advisable at this point in time. Yog. Um, in the meantime, let me see. Uh, let's go to another one. I don't know. Um, okay. Good afternoon to you guys. God bless. Uh, I don't know what will happen with those people. Them who put up my son picture. That's not in Guyana. He vote and they said there's a lie. Please don't leave my con He hasn't left the country for the last five years. So apparently somebody's son is on the list of 172. Um, uh, let's see if there's another one. All the GCOM presiding officers still have their copies of the SOPs. Yo, maybe you want to respond to that one. Well, what we do know, what we could respond, and I want to respond to the first one. I know you don't want to, but I want to. Um, uh, to that caller that said we should say who won. Here, here's what happened. We don't know who won. What we know is who's in the lead. And who is in the lead, you can check Kaitra News front page and you will see it on a daily basis as to how the count is ongoing. Um, only Claudette Singh can declare who would um, have won these elections. <laughs> with regards to the PO, Leonard, it slipped me. That's why I raised this matter with, um, with the items that are in the box or not in the box. Um, uh, look, if, if those documents, if the DROs were instructed to pass those documents over to the RO, and the RO ought to have passed them over to the CEO, there is a likelihood then, Leonard, that a couple scenarios can play out here now. One is, remember, Mr. Mingo is still within the handsome employment of GCOM, still being paid by the taxpayers. The question is, at this late moment, a man who has been guilty of a severe breach has not been suspended, and I'm now questioning whether he has documents in his possession, and what would be the safety of those documents? And that is a grave concern, because the DRO would have passed the documents over to the RO. Whether RO passed those documents over to the CEO is another matter. However, the bottom line is that GCOM and the CEO is in legal possession of every document and every ballot of these elections. And if GCOM doesn't want to admit it, that would be another matter. And that would be a matter for the courts to investigate and do a forensic audit. And to that point, I am surprised that Mr. Grandfather Nagamutu has said that these, these elections need a forensic audit and he's saying it before he knows whether he has won or lost. And it boggles the mind. If Mr. Nagamoto's party win these elections, is he going to say, no, 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 we're not going to accept this thing. We're going to sit back because it is so flawed. If APNU is declared the winner, I would certainly hope with all we have seen, if Claudette Singh announced APNU is the winner, that Mr. Granger, Mr. Nagamoto, Mr. Ramjatan, and all of them, We'll say, no, 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 we can't accept this win. These elections were flawed. Absolutely, dear. And so here, here's another one. I want to say to the people and the APNU, to the PP people, people and the APNU people to humble themselves and see who can be the next president. So humble yourself, people. Um, that's what the person is saying there. 
So let me see. Um, uh, just one more before we go to the phone line. Sorry, I'm back in the PPP all the way. I vote for them also, my wife and son. I'd be glad if the PPP can win the election. But uh, uh, I hope this fools don't get more foolish between now and Monday. So the people are really um, asking that you know we hold a level head right now. Let's go straight to the phone lines here. Good, Good afternoon, calling you near. Yes, good afternoon, caller. You're here. Could you lower the volume of your radio quickly, please? Hello? Hello? Yes, good afternoon, caller. You're here. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, um, ma'am. I'd just like to share my view. It is mind boggling that um, you find that we have not heard from Ms. Claudet Singh or. Mr. Lowen feel anything from them to the press. So I'm wondering if the press cannot demand an interview from them so that they can put information out there concerning these missing items. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yog? Say that again, Leonard. Sorry. I, th I, I think uh, the, the, the caller would have been addressing you. Well, if he missed that, I think, I'm not sure if he would have heard. I'm an I'm ardent, sorry. I'm an ardent listener to your program, and from my knowledge and understanding, it is GCOM and its staff who are responsible for our situation we are in today. It simply shows GCOM staff have to be trained more, cause we don't want to go through this ever again. You can't blame no political party. Uh, this is a text from one of our people who are listening. Uh, should the PPPC win? And Miss Singh declared the APNU win. What what can happen? To my thinking, Miss Singh is part of the APNU. Uh, that's from another one. Uh, so, right, Leonard. Just to answer the one co one comment, that the training. I want everybody to realize this is not Mr. Lowenfield's first election. It is not his second. This man has a lot of experience. So he was not the CEO the last election around, but he was certainly in the employ of GCOM, wasn't he, Leonard? Mr. Lowenfield has been there. Absolutely, Yog. Um, so. You know, and, and like I said a little earlier, you could have all the systems in place. If you give given an instruction to deviate uh, for whatever reasons, then the system is not going to work. So uh, but, the best of systems is going to be breached. I want to tell you. I want to tell you something. I, I received what I think is a is a very great idea. <clears throat> the GCOM, the commission is meeting presently, Leonard. And we all know that as of this morning, there was 166 boxes to go. I, I, you know, I mean, I, I have been a manager. You were a manager. Uh, you know, how do managers run their businesses and their entities? If I knew I had 166 boxes to go, Leonard, I, yesterday I would have made a decision. I would have said to all my agents, all my workers, listen, guys, last lap, 166 to go. Let's work to finish. Let's work to finish. And you know what? By tonight, this country could have closed those, recount, those recounts and only the tabulations could have ongoing, could have been ongoing. And that is a, a marvelous idea. The GCOM uh, Commission is in meeting presently. I would like to urge them, think about it. Let us go. It's just probably now uh, 100 more to go thereabouts. Let's go get it done. Too much anxiety is being raised at these last moment. Too much things are happening. Absolutely. And you recall, um, you, you reminded me there of a famous quote by the late JFK, a former president of the United States. He was assassinated. And he says, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Paraphrasing there. There's another caller online. Good afternoon, caller. You're on the air. Hello. Yes, good afternoon, caller. You're on the air. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Um, I would just like to share my piece concerning this whole election thing. Now, I think that um, members of the coalition, and I'm not here for any party, but I am speaking from what I see. The members of the coalition, they need to just accept the election for what it is. They've lost the election. Go get themselves ready, prepare for the next five years, and come again. The Guyanese people were saying to them that, hey, we had enough of you. you. You promised us this. You didn't fulfill. We vote for a change. Let's move on from there. And you come next five years and try. Because you cannot be telling me that these politicians in the coalition have this country at heart and they're trying to destroy it. 
because I'm, I'm guaranteeing you, when the results of this election is being announced, they're going to have they're going to have chaos in this country. It's a fact. History history will tell us that. And I think if these guys really have Guyana at heart, they will just accept it for what it is and let this country move on. We're in the middle of a pandemic. People are suffering. Families need help. Nothing cannot be done because we doesn't have a government. Everything is being about this politics and politics and politics. And for me, as a Guyanese, I think I had enough of it. GCOM need to do what they have to do. We all know who's the winner of the election. And let's move on. Let's move on. If you have country at heart, let's move on. And I would like to send a message to, 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 to the next government, the BBB. Be a government for all gangs. Represent the entire Guyana. Please represent the entire Guyana. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, let me tell you, let me disagree with you right there and then. There will not be any uh, uh, violence in this country. It's unacceptable. The people would not accept it. Uh, we have gone through too much. COVID-19, election since December the 21st, 2018, our people have been through it. I think we've been through the ring of their yoke. We've been tossed from side to side, from court step to court step. We've been tossed from side to side, from decision to decision, from the choice of a GCOM chairman to the firing of, of one to the choosing of another. I don't think we could tolerate any kind of thing that is going to descend this country farther into the abyss than where we are at the moment. So I don't think, uh, I don't fully agree with you that, uh, uh, you know, we are going to be headed into violence. The people are tired. Uh, I think we have uh, many decent Guyanese here. It's just one, two of, uh, how you would say it, the dissidents, and, and Leonard, the dissidents, Leonard, I would call them, Yog. And Leonard, violence for what? I don't what know. Do Yeah, what we want to be violent about, for 65 persons to have a good life and the rest of us to keep scratching the dirt? Is that what we want to have violence for? Is that what we want to be separate for? Is that what we want to have? I see people talking about it's time to divide the country because of the race. The races don't have a problem. Is the politicians have a problem with the races? You, you want know, so so this this thing about you know I'm I'm seeing a lot of rhetoric. There are men and women that one would have been respecting all these years, all of a sudden taking very very dangerous lines, and I'm wondering. Now you have one foot in the grave, for heaven's sake. You are that old, and you are going to go down life like this? I have to repeat, you know, when, when Trump, when President Trump went in front of that church for the photo op, and he held the Bible, you know what they did yesterday, Leonard? The people of the church and of other churches came out and stood on the exact spot and here is what a man said and i cheered him you know what he said he said mr president you came here and you held the bible in your hand and we are calling you to hold it in your heart having it in your hand is not good enough so it's time that the, the, the politicians and to that gentleman who called we got to realize when we follow them and we get violent is we fighting each other for certain people to enjoy the good life, whether you're PNC or PPP or who it doesn't matter. We can't be used like this, man. Absolutely. We got to ensure that we hold them responsible. And don't forget, why are we so scared of a loss in election? When the electorate vote you out, Leonard, why are we so scared to give up power? Are you behaving so miserably, miserably that you know that people are not going to vote you back in? Is that what you're saying? Because all of these shenanigans is basically showing a fear of another election in this country. And I'm saying, let the electorate always decide who must run the country, not politicians, because then we don't have any chance to be a people anymore absolutely and we only have to look to the u.s look at minnesota look at what's happening in new york with some mindless characters just breaking into store wells fargo i saw somebody going into wells fargo they had a couple of people with uh, i think the the big heavy duty hammer the, and they were hitting the glass it's a bulletproof glass and you got to see the way that they were storming the building and that's not something that we could easily tolerate there's a caller in line good afternoon caller 
Good uh, afternoon, caller. You on the air? Yes, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I must compliment you guys for doing a good job there and informing this nation what is taking place in this country. I've got a report to make. This thing looks serious. The AFC of new people are mobilizing people from Barbies here now to go to Georgetown. For what reason? I don't know. Let this nation learn about this thing. You understand? This looks dangerous. I mean, I've lived through, I'm a pensioner now, and I've lived through some elections, and I've lived through violence in this country. We don't want this thing to happen again. You understand? I thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, York, I don't know what to, how to respond to that. Uh, people gathering up themselves. How do we know that they're being bought to George Strong? I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, are we hearing any reports of that? People mobilizing? Well, there, there seems to be some so-called leaders, and I say them so-called leaders because they're just, uh, you know, they're just Kool-Aid uh, sharers kind of thing um, that are calling on people to mobilize. Re Leonard, you would recall, you would recall that prior to the elections, one politician stood up and said, when you vote, don't go home. And so obviously this call is now being repeated. And you know what? What has been mind boggling is that that politician was not even slapped on the wrist by the president, by the leader of the list. Nothing, nothing has been done to bring down the purveyors of violence and the purveyors of, of filthy theft in this country. Corruption, nothing has been done. And the people are watching. Our turn will come. Absolutely. So quickly, let me go read one more text before we head to the phone lines again. All the GCOM presiding officers still have their copies of the SOPs. Initially, I think GCOM has colluded with APNU FC to get to mess up the election. Region 6 has a number of dilapidated stamps to work with on the March 2nd election. The laws were copied and read to election day officials and the trainers from GCOM on the fines and jail time for presiding officers. I want to know what will happen to Mr. Mingo. The fines and jail time is for presiding officers who would have committed an infraction in election day, March the 2nd. That is from one uh, viewer listener on the program. They will send that in a text or uh, phone zero. Um, Yog, I, I'm not sure, maybe you could address it. There's a call online. Good afternoon, caller, you're on the air. Yes, good afternoon, caller, you're on the air. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, sir. You're on the air. Good afternoon once again. One of the great hallmarks, everybody believe integrity is about being honest and these things. One of the greatest hallmarks of integrity is to come out and say, I was wrong and correct yourself. And if APNO FC can do that and tell to the people that they lie to them, they will respect them. They will be angry, but we respect them. Secondly, one of the problems that we have I got to talk about the two main opposition, the two main political parties that I am liking some of the new ones. They, when we have leaders that lack the charisma and to, to control the people and to win them over, there's nobody right now, Mr. Granger, I respect him. But if there's anything going to happen, it's going to be from under him, those people under him, and he does not have that character and charisma to come out and say no like a Mr. Hyde or like a Mr. Jagan or even a Mr. Barnum. And that is something that we need to look at when we're choosing leaders. A leader must not just be a leader, but a leader of leaders who, when he says no, it is no. When he says yes, it is yes. If this man said to the world that he will accept what Ms. Claudette Singh said, then if I was him and I being me who talking here right now, there's nobody under my control could have come out to make any other statement contrary to that because they would not have a job anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is something that is very, very serious. Because if I know if Ms. Glenn, Mr. Glenn, I'll tell you, don't do X. And you come on the radio and do X, we will might hear you working at the Chronicle tomorrow. Because that is serious business. If the boss says this, that's what it got to be. And I am sorry. And what that gentleman saying, you, you say is no. You cannot have dry wood in the hot sun and throwing gasoline and diesel and care on it and telling me that there will not be a fire. All the rhetoric has been pointing to one thing, to use the Guyanese people to project violence in this country. That is all. Use the electorate. And that's what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I hope Guyanese don't get used again. They have been used over and over and over again. 
please, Guyanese people, don't be used by no politician. Whatever you damage in this country is our country, not their country, our country. Please, please, I beg you. Thank you very much, Zia Carlo. Uh, uh, if you want to get on to us, 226-7453. Uh, we have a, a WhatsApp uh, number, 6222 Don't call on that number. We have no way of transferring the signals uh, uh, in a very clear manner to our system here. Uh, we apologize for that. We'd have to get some other numbers. Uh, so it's 226-7453 at the moment. Yorg, I don't know if you want to quickly respond to that, Carlo. Well, no, the caller, the caller has his point. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, and, and this is what I think we are both appealing that, you know, uh, he said it right. Ladies and gentlemen, let us not allow ourselves to be used. Um, and it is something that we need to be cognizant of going forward to. Never, never must we allow ourselves to be used. Uh, you know, whether it is a, it is a call for, for uh, um, radicalness, it's a call for, for racial conscience, it's a call for, for whatever it is, let us all use our brains. Let us use and assess where we want to go, what kind of country, what kind of world we want to hand over to our children because we are not here forever. Leonard, there's another message that came in that said, um, if we can deal quickly with uh, this matter of uh, uh, GCOM declaring credible results um, and, and whether, whether the election has a potential of lacking credibility. And so GCOM will not, um, you remember Mr. Alexander answered your question on that, Leonard, as to whether he could, whether uh, the, the elections could be annulled. Yes. Well, one of the things, and, and let me put it in in context here. There is a little fear that the orders that were issued that would have paved the way for the recount. Uh, in it, it spoke to how the uh, results of the recount would have been handled and the observations and so on. And it spoke, it had the word credible uh, results in it. So maybe I want to put it to you again. I did ask uh, Commissioner Vincent Alexander a few nights back whether there's any uh, possibilities for uh, the, the elections to be, um, uh, the results rather of the recount to be treated in any other way except to be declared um, and to be treated and then transferred into a report to the chancellor. And, he, and I think he would have made some uh, very uh, definitive statements there. Uh, maybe you want to share Correct. that with us. Correct. Well, well, the truth is, um, if you go back to the second recital of the GCOM order of 4th May, it says, and whereas the president and the leader of the opposition and all contesting parties agreed to a CARICOM proposal for a total recount of all electoral districts as a means of assuaging the contesting parties and determining a final credible count, a final credible count. So a lot of concerns have been expressed, as you did that day, to uh, Mr. Alexander, to you know how how definitive is this word credible? Because APNU AFC has been uh, hitting all the airways possible to say these elections lack credibility. There are too much fraud. There is, uh, and you know, the 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 main headline has been fraud, fraud, fraud. And you know, the Guyana rag, which uh, I think you call it the Guyana Chronicle. I call it the Guyana rag. The Guyana rag has been having it at its headlines. Fraud, fraud, fraud. Fraud hasn't been proven. It has been alleged. It has been alleged. Those allegations were handed to the chairman. The chairman has to now do whatever she has to do to make a determination whether to accommodate those allegations or to investigate them or not. So let's be clear. Fraud is a declaration of something. And fraud has an intent. So one can go back and question around a number of things with fraudulent declarations that would have been made before. Now, coming back to this matter of credible, um, um, the credible count, I want to just share this with viewers and listeners. Credibility is a qualitative uh, um, a statement, is a qualitative measurement. Credibility means the capability or the power to elicit belief. Whether the results are believable whether the results are truthful, whether the results reflect what it, it, what it ought to reflect. And so whether fraud would, would, would now dilute the well, allegations of fraud, whether allegations of fraud are now going to dilute the results would be left to one person alone in this country, and that's Justice Claudette Singh, the chairman. 
So I just wanted to share that with you, Leonard, because uh, there is a concern and we will continue to deliberate it, I guess, until Miss, uh, until Justice Claudette makes her determination. She has a very critical role, Yog, and so very quickly there is a message from somebody. We have a lot of persons over in, especially in the New York area, in the U.S., North America, Canada, joining us, and uh, this is what it says. Good day to you, uh, both uh, Dr. Mahadio and Mr. Gildari. The truth will remain the truth, no matter the spin. We cannot judge what we don't know. What we know, that there was a transparent attempt to not only to rig, but to commit election fraud, a crime of great turpitude. Democracy must prevail no matter the cost. Uh, the power must remain with the people, not politicians. I keep keep up the good work, and God bless you. Uh, so uh, the power, the, this is what strikes me, the power yeah. must remain with the people and not politicians. I agree with you. Correct. And, and the truth must remain the truth, and the truth will be revealed. The problem is, if, 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 if some people doesn't want to accept the truth, what does it mean to the rest who accept the truth? Look, the, everybody has freedom. You're, you have a constitutional right to your freedom. But there is a limit to that freedom. You cannot enjoy your freedom to the extent of removing the freedom from others. The same equal freedom. I cannot want to be, you know, doing what I'm doing without allowing Leonard to do what he wants to do. So freedom has a limit. And so Leonard... You know, the situation is the truth will be revealed. But whether some people will not want to accept the truth to the extent where they will impinge upon the freedom of others will be what we are going to see in the next seven to ten days. Well, there's a there's an interesting text here, Yog, somebody local now. Uh, good afternoon, Yog and Leonard. I think Miss Singh, this is Dr. Singh, should consult with the Caribbean elections chairman to the situation in Guyana and ask for advice on the that the election should not divide Guyanese. I think the ballot and the boxes matter. Everything else is irrelevant. I'm not so sure. Uh, what do you, if the, the documents are missing, uh, the counter file, files, um, the unused ballots and so on, well, how do you know that those ballots in the boxes um, are are uh, the genuine things? Um, Yog, I'm not sure. Could you, could you answer no. that? Because there's no, something no, no. in my head. Correction, correction. They are not missing. None of these documents are missing. They're not, they didn't go to Spain or go to France or somewhere. They're not missing. They're not in the box. Where Remember are they? yesterday, yesterday we shared the information. Mm -hmm. Documents are in two places. Some are in the box and some are in the bag. So what's in what's with Mr. Lowenfield is critical to this process. I would agree with that person. You cannot penalize an honest voter who cast his or her vote by saying, my officer screwed up, so your vote must matter. That is, is a serious, serious flaw if that were to even be a contemplation of the GCOM chairman. Absolutely. Yoga. And so we go, is there a phone? Uh, there's a call there. Call you on the air. Good afternoon. Yes, calling you on the air. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. And to your listeners. I want to ask a simple question, right? A common sense question. We're blaming Mr. Mingo for, for uh, you know, making a declaration. But Mr. Mingo had to get that document that he was reading off from, from somewhere, some, or some persons at GCOM, some person prepared that for him. Am I... You think you follow me? We follow you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. What I'm saying is that Mr. Mingo didn't take it on himself to just um, think. He had to get that document that he was reading off from, that information. He had to get it from some people preparing it for him to, 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 to read it off. So we can't blame Mr. Mingo alone. There's other people who colluded with him to, 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 to bring that out. You agree with me? We're following you so far. Uh, so you're saying not only blame Mr. Mingo, but no, others. No, we cannot blame it. There, there is some collusion there. And from what I'm, I'm, I'm reading through now, and then I'm hearing Mr. Alexander saying that um, this election is not credible. Mr. Alexander is part of this commission, right? For you now to go out to tell the Guyanese people 
when we already send, spend six billion of taxpayers' money to say that it's not terrible now at this ninth hour, you know, Mr. Alexander should find himself in front of some, some you know, court that deals with this kind of thing. You, you follow? You think you follow me? Yes, we we very we very very clear. I am saying we should not take this thing too lightly. There is people going to say, you know. Um, we are the winners, they are the winners. But, you know, at the end of the day, we have to make a good judgment. And uh, Claudette Singh, I, I'm not sure, I think she's afraid to come out even to speak to the guy in East Eagle because she's in a position, I think, that she cannot even make certain decisions. Other people are making decisions for her. Well, that's a very frightening thing that you see in there. But no, but that's it? the truth. But if you If you look at her behavior, and what is happening? Something is frightening this woman. I don't think that this woman is in the right state of mind to deal with this whole thing. Uh, well, let's thank hope. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear caller. Um, some very pertinent points. So let me, let me, let me. I, I'm not a, 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 a lawyer here, but Yog, let me try to think. It. If Yog has stolen something, and everybody see him when he enters the house and take out the people's stuff, and he sold it to the man around the corner there. Uh, you would be he held, charged with a uh, theft or whatever form of theft, whether it's a break-in, whether it's uh, um, uh, w whatever charge it is. But at the end of the day, the person who's receiving is also going to be charged. And I want to agree with you that uh, uh, the box stops uh, ultimately at the chief elections officer. But at the end of the day, the person that everybody saw uh, in that early early days of March at the Ashman's building was uh, Clement Mingo. He had his mandate that was very, very clear what he's supposed to do for him to make the declarations. For him to stand up and make the declarations without verifying, that cannot be an excuse uh, for what mm -hmm. would have transpired on the particular day. That is me uh, as a layman talking. Uh, with regards to um, the other one, maybe Yoga, you would want to address that and uh, both, both is right. true. Well, well, the, the, the truth is that uh, the gentleman has said that, look, it cannot be Mingo alone. There is, and we said it before, there has to be an intellectual author behind Mr. Mingo. Remember, Mr. Mingo had some health problems. He ended up going to the hospital, spent some time out of the center. Then he came back in and uh, abracadabra happened. Um, so uh, that is so. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, the truth is public calls have been made. So if Mr. Mingo would want to shift or to, to, to divorce himself from under any such accusations, he should come out and speak. He owes that to the Guyanese, per, um, to the Guyanese people. Mr. Mingo, wherever you are, sir, please emerge. Emerge and let the truth come out with you. Because everybody is cursing you up. So that's one thing. On the other side, um, Madam Claude is saying, I would still, I would still beg that, you know, um, she has her own way of doing things. And I would still beg that it's one, one week more. And I am sure, to the caller's point, I'm sure Madam Claude is saying, being a, a, a judge with years of distinguished service at the bar, at the bench, she would undoubtedly be scouring Pre cases, well, there's no precedence to what Guyana has gone through, but she will certainly be scouring countries and cases that might give an educated, uh, help her make an educated decision, as well as maybe talk to the persons who can help her make that um, decision. The one thing that I find that, uh, you know, one of our um, one of our viewers would have sent here, Leonard, um, gentlemen, I'll just say Richard for now, um, one thing he has said that, that is another mind-boggling issue is that box after box has shown Mr. Mingo's fraud. Box after box has shown that Mr. Mingo inflated those boxes, manufactured, manufactured thousands of voters. The same APNU AFC that is saying that somebody else manufactured dead and, and, and all of these voters, Leonard, the same APNU AFC that is saying there has been impersonification at the ballot where people voted once or twice. They have not questioned themselves 
where they and their intellectual authors got those 15,000 votes that Mingo manufactured. Where did these people come from? Where did the numbers come from? And you know what is an indictment upon the, the, the chairman of GCOM? That Absolutely. notwithstanding mm -hmm. Mingo's fingers being made real to the public, Mingo's fraud, sorry, she still has not released those SOPs, which we have all seen has been fraudulent. And don't forget, Yo, uh, the uh, chief elections officer, Kate Lewinfield, would have prepared a report uh, which would have paved the way for her declarations, uh, a national declarations, and the GCOM uh, commission was supposed to have met and deliberated. I think this has to do with the second declaration of Claremont Mingo. Uh, the GCOM chair, I, I think reportedly, although she has not come out openly and said it, uh, took a decision to go for a recount instead of having the, the GCOM commission itself uh, deal with the issue. So some very important things when it comes to questioning whether Claudette Singh is doing the right thing or not. I, I would uh, want to say that she, uh, the pressure is on her to come out and talk to the media. She has not, Keith Lowenfield has not engaged the media for the longest while. Um, and so uh, at the end of the day, we'd have to continually push over the next couple of days because it's going to be very critical, you know, tomorrow, Monday. The country needs leadership, the country needs answers. So these people here who have been tasked, um, it is not that the media is pressuring them. You cannot have things done with especially so many questions that are being asked mm -hmm. and not say anything. That is totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. So I think and this, one of the yes. Things, one of the things too, Leonard, is that, uh, you know, with all the 90 days behind us and now we're going to head to 106 days plus maybe, with all of that, um, I'm still hoping Lowenfield and uh, Claudette Singh will emerge from this and, and look good and have every right to be proud of, of everything, notwithstanding the travesty of these past weeks. Absolutely, dear Yog, and they, it is imperative that they look and see the legacy that they're leaving. I think the Madam Chair is trying. Um, I, I want to believe so. There could be other perceptions as to uh, her performance, as the way she would have engaged the people. Is a caller in here? And, and, and let, yeah, go on. Yes, caller, good afternoon. You're on the air? Yeah, good afternoon. I would like to ask one question. If you're saying that Mr. Mingo um, would have been a person who would have um, a committed fraud in this election, therefore, how can we declare a winner? That's all. That's all. Thank you very much, sir. Yog? Well, that's why you didn't have a declaration made because his, he, the court found that his declaration was not consistent with what is required under law. He went and he did the same thing again. As you remember, the move was from spreadsheet to bed sheet. He went from spreadsheet to bed sheet and he did the same thing again. And there's a contempt proceedings that would have been filed again. So there was no declaration because by then the chairman had promised to have a recount. At the end of this recount, of course, there will have to be a declaration. Um, Leonard, just quickly, let me say this. There is some, uh, some other emerging news that box number 47, 47. And here, I want to just share this with everyone because this speaks to the duplicitousness of, of, of the politicians. The duplicitousness and maybe, the, you know, the, the putrid attempts that are coming out by some of them. Look, box number 47, 47, today in Beirut, APNU AFC, 346 pppc three guess what 27 persons voted without id cards only 19 of those were entered in the poll book but not one objection not one objection from the apno afc people not one Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Young Mahadio. And if you're now joining us, this is uh, Kaicho Radio 99.1, 99.5. You can get us online, Kaicho News Online, my Tuna app, uh, my Radio Garden app, 
uh, we have our lines open 226-7453. We have a WhatsApp number 6222222. Don't call us on that number. Uh, we're not taking calls, just WhatsApp on that call. Uh, we're trying to get a number more lines 226-7453 at the moment. Uh, and you could call us on that. Let us know. And of course, you could WhatsApp us on 62222. This is our special edition of the Elections Watch hours away from uh, the elections recount, which is expected to be wrapped up uh, as early as tomorrow. We could spill over uh, uh, to Monday. Uh, we would be in here, according to my count, on day 32, since the uh, national recount of the March 2nd uh, uh, ballots would have been casted. We would be in day 96, not some very pretty figures, yo, since we would have had elections on March 2nd something that we should and uh, commit ourselves never to have a repeat of in this country right. ever 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 again there's a caller right. in line good afternoon caller, caller you're in the air yes good afternoon caller you're in the air hi good afternoon good afternoon sir um the the case should mingle well okay he attempted to, he did commit a fraud by doing the wrong thing i'm what a guy was saying earlier Somebody else had to help prepare that document. And if you look at what is unfolding now in Region 4, in these maps, you're seeing clearly, and I've been saying this from the starting, there are only three people that concern the opposition in GCOM. To me, all the rest of them, all the rest of them have party affiliated to the PNC. And, I mean, you guys in the media fraternity can't call it like that publicly. But you might know deep down in your heart, but you can't say it. But we are the layman on the road, and we know what's going on. Look, everybody knows this, the PPP won this election. There is no doubt about that. Right? So what the government is going to do now is try to do like what they did. You lost a no-confident motion in December of 2018. And if you didn't have court matters, we would have gone all the way. We wouldn't even got the election if the PPP just throw down and allow it to happen. Then you talk about Mingo, the court or the Mingo that he go back and do it the right way. Then he go and do it wrong again. And, and I'm saying uh, to me, to me, the court, the court of itself, the Honorable J Roxanne, I think she should have been a little more stern with him on the second time. Rather than charge him for contempt of court, right away she should have thrown him outside in jail. Because you failed to accept and carry out an order that I give you as, the, as a judge. I told you to go and do it the right way. And still you go and do your own thing. So, to me, this thing is a whole heap of people got a part to play. And I'm sorry to say this, but if there is ever going to be another election in Guyana, I don't think Guyanese should support it if we own people are going to be running because we show that we corrupt we don't matter how much training you give a man as you were saying earlier he was told to do this and he was told to do that and he was told to do this so who is the training about we see that people could be derailed easy people you have so much of party interference in gcom one side dominate one side completely dominate the, 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 the process I'm saying that the only three people in GCOM who I think, I won't call them neutral, but I will call them the PPP supporters, and those are the commissioner. The other rest of them are PNC affiliates. Because you've seen it clearly, and by the time the box is over, you're going to hear Region 4. That's the only way you got all of these confusion in. So they had known what was going on in those box, and they had the time to prepare the document and give... The only thing I believe personally, I would tell Mingo if I see it, you should not have done, you should not have read it. You should have refused to read it. Maybe that's the only mistake he made. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, caller. And while that is happening, and maybe Yogi, will, you would answer that. Uh, somebody sent us a text. While we're paying attention to elections, uh, uh, watch here and and everything else that comes with elections 2020 there's that deep worry with uh, the return of students school for exams which are slated for not only the grade six but cape and c-sex next next month and uh, this lady is saying that you know i don't understand 
uh, why is it that we open him back in school? Uh, why we open in the school back? Uh, I have a son who's asthmatic, and I don't think I'd be able to send him to school. So uh, uh, you and I spoke yesterday about the mask. Uh, how long could you put a child in the mask and have him sit down or her sit down when you know uh, they have to do it for several hours? It's something that is not very easy, especially if you have any underlying conditions. Um, okay, over to you with regard to the caller. The caller has certainly made points of interest, which I think everybody is aware. And yeah, you know, I mean, the, the thing is, the call, caller, you are right. Look, whether the media says things in a particular way or not, the people of this country knows exactly what's going on. Um, I have been, I know Leonard Kant, I have been saying certain things, stretching the limit of, of Leonard's patience sometime. And Leonard, thank you for being a gracious host. Because, uh, you know, the, the, the truth is that sometimes we, we tend to call things the way we see it. And I certainly, I will say this, and I've said it before. The commission has only one person, sir, not three. The commission has one person, one. That is the chairman. Because the three PNC, uh, APNU, AFC commissioners will always vote for their party. The three PPP commissioners are always going to vote for their party. And always, as evidenced by these elections, the chairman has a casting vote. The chairman's hand, therefore, is always going to show in terms of, uh, you know, where does she, where, where will she swing her vote towards more often than not? Leonard, the other thing that we have to realize, while all of this is happening, and the, the, the note you got here is quite right, education is important. But here's another thing that we have all uh, not been paying attention to. Guyana, this wonderful country called Guyana, is bankrupt as we speak. So I, the next government that swears in has a, a monumental task to get its priorities in order and to build with nothing. The only thing you can hope is that the oil reserves that thankfully are under sanction and being stored overseas, nobody has been able to touch it. And so that can probably be a baseline. But you know, Leonard, when we were all thinking that the oil money would have given a good life for all, guess what? It is now going to be used to rebuild from scratch because everything. I mean, I'm looking at uh, somebody has released some of the statements from the Bank of Guyana, and you look at the liabilities, you look at the assets. It's it's really really worrying. Well, that's something, and I think this uh, a new government that comes into place, whether it's the PPP C or whether it's the coalition. They have a hard task ahead of them, not only from a populace uh, or half of the populace, which is going to be uh, very angry, but they have an economy to deal with. They would have a post or a COVID situation to deal with. So it's not going to be easy. Uh, there's going to be no honeymoon at that point in time. Uh, if you want to get on to us, 226-7453-6222. No honeymoon for the people, for the next government that is uh, coming and be seated at the Shift Chandapal Drive there in Georgetown. Uh, there's a caller online. Yes, good afternoon, caller. Good afternoon, caller. You're on the air. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I am Balram Ramdas from 62 Toshin, East Bank, Yes, sir. I noticed my name was in the um, Kaicho, the Starbrook newspaper, that I didn't went here on election day. I was here, and I voted at Philadelphia Primary School. That's on the uh, West Coast there, sir? Yes. Uh, did you raise the issue with anybody, uh, yes, whether yes, the police the, or the so? No, the party member. Uh -huh. they, they, they asked me to follow a farm and sign it up. They, had my, they have my ID card and everything. The party? Which party are you talking about? Uh, PPP party. So they have taken the information. Have you tried approaching the police and say that, look, I was in the country? No. You, that, that, is a, that would be something good to do. Well, Yog? What are you thinking? Yes, 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 sir. You should, you should uh, ventilate as far as it's practical, write a letter. If you have to remember that another citizen wrote to the chairman to say, Dear Madam Chairman, I noticed my name there and I'm not in the country. Sorry, you could do the same. You could generate a letter, address it to the chairman and okay. say, I am here and I was in country and my name is on that list. Okay. Thank you very much. Does it yeah, call? Yeah. Thank you very much. So, Yog, uh, we are seeing uh, more and more persons are coming out. Uh, they are saying that you know, I, 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 I am in Guyana, 
or I was overseas. There was that one person who said he's overseas and um, uh, the police uh, would have published his name. Um, but, you know, Jörg, I'm not sure we come back to that police list uh, that would have been confirmed uh, 172 names. I just not very good. I, I feel yeah. very bad. I feel very bad with the fact that, you know, uh, there's a caller nine. Yes. G go ahead, caller. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Hey, Gildari. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. You, you and you. Yes, um, first, first thing, I, your caller from Barbies um, in, the, in the fields, in the Abari, your 99.5 is not working. I'm getting you a 99.1, but that's not good in this area. But a 99.5 would have normally be good for me here. Um, the, sec the second thing I want to talk about is this school be reopening. I, I have a suggestion. I don't know if it make it makes sense to me. And some, you know, if you can listen and then we can put it put it out. What about the grade six children? I am very scared of the children going back to school. This thing I think it's gonna cause problems. Um what about if we look at their their report for the past three or four terms and assess them in school, the school report. That might not be the best, best way, but this is going to definitely, for me, the best way now because of COVID. And then we, we, we put them in, 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 their, in different schools, right? Because young children, children that is grown that will have to do the CSEC might have a, a, little bit, a little bit more sense and take a little more precaution with this thing, but small children is not going to do that. They're still going to be together, and many small children, many children nowadays have this is asthmatic. Um, I had a, a daughter, well, now she's grown and overseas. She used to be an asthmatic case, and we have many children like that. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know who is um, putting this thing out and if they're thinking far enough. The next thing in regards to COVID, I have seen this in Suriname. The, the, the numbers are getting um, growing every day rapidly. And I've seen two Surinamese vehicle this morning on the west coast of Barbies Road. They're coming from, from New Amsterdam side. I don't know if they were here all the time or they just come across. I don't know what's going on. I hope that that's not so. In regards to our election, it's very sad. The PPP has, has all the, the results are showing, but these people, the PNC, Granger and his people, they're not going to accept. And this is something that is happening, con will continue to happen in our country unless we have people in the PNC who is willing to change their approach to this whole thing. This has been the position from, from ever since I can remember election, they're not going to accept defeat. They're, they will never win an election, and they will come out there and cause problems. I hope that good sense can prevail. The Guyanese, I'm appealing to all Guyanese, especially the Guyanese who would have been supportive to the, to the coalition. Let good sense prevail. We had a recount, and the recounts have shown clear who have the vote. The people from the, our international friends have said that Mingo have tried to steal the election. That is my words, but that is, that is exactly what they have meant in, in, in all their statements. And then we have a recount. Let us respect this country belongs to us. We are Guyanese. We, are having, we have oil now. We are, being, we are being called a rich country from the, from the international developed country. But we are behaving in just such a poor, lackadaisical, irresponsible manner. And we need to change it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Zir. Uh, caller, all the way from uh, West Babis area. Yog, uh, very quickly, um, I, I think I'm thinking... Uh, my, my, my daughter, who is set to write the grade six, I don't think that uh, she's a high achiever. Um, I don't think uh, uh, she will be going to write the exam. I think that that's a decision that's been taken. I think uh, the, the mom is very, very um, 
worried about that. But very quickly before I hand you over, I want to read this from somebody who has sent us a text and asked, but please, please read it. Did it occur to, to y'all that maybe uh, people are afraid of the PPP rule? A lot has been done uh, under them that scares people. While a group of people might be okay with what's happening, some people didn't see anything from the PPP except during the election. So we could talk about credible, but not all, uh, not all want PPP back in the air, and it got nothing to do with race. Um, but uh, with regards to the caller, you, uh, if anything, you want to address that. Mm. No, the caller is right. And with regards to the education, uh, uh, um, you know, there, he is right to point. Or there, there are two distinct, distinctly different age groups. One of the younger children that, that has to go take their exams. And, and I think, Leonard, we will probably have to really reach out back to the education um, um, offices. But I think they have a system, sir, where they're allowing you to opt out and you will be placed to the school nearest to you. So there is that likelihood we'll investigate it more. And I'm sure Leonard may have some more information on that. With regards to the CXC, Leonard, it, it gets to a situation where the, the importance of the classes vis-a-vis -vis the students completing their, their um, you know, their work, uh, what you call it, the, the, the work that they have to submit vis-a-vis -vis preparation for exams. I think you know we need to be very careful because here, here's I mean I'm I'm reading a text that I I've just received too. Mister, my son goes to school, and suppose <laughs> I I hate to read this out. It sounds like a joke, but here is a serious question. Suppose he plays around and fools around, and he brings home the disease to to his to, to the family. So Leonard, I, I I can't answer that question. The the truth is that uh, you know. Children are going to be children. I mean, you know, at that age, they, they are children. So um, we got to ensure we take the, the right precautions in mind. However, at the end of the day, remember, Guyana, we have not as yet gotten to the stage where we could sit and take exams online because not every child, not every home has the access to the internet. And at the very least, you don't have reliable power to provide you with reliable internet and neither do you have reliable internet. So if you're taking exams and the internet goes down on you, it, it's going to be a problem. I remember, Leonard, if I could share this in two seconds, a couple of seconds. I remember when I was doing my degree, I enrolled with an overseas university, had to take an online exam to qualify to enter, by the way. And I sit, sat the exam and we had a, a blackout. Internet went <laughs> off. And you know, I wasn't allowed to, to complete that exam because they, 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 um, they, I had to take a flight and go and sit there and write the exam. So. These are things we need to think of when we're talking about online exams, but Guyana, of course, cannot qualify for that because we don't have the infrastructure. Now, <clears throat> with regards to the last uh, statement, the, the, the thing you read out just now, it, it is a very important paradigm we need to think of. And you and I, to that person who sent you that note, I hear you and I feel your concern because this gentleman here on this side of this table opposite Leonard Gillari, pre-2015, I was writing and opposing everything you could think about of that government then. Everything. You see that gentleman opposite me, Mr. Leonard Gildari, he was ridiculed and got death threats and everything because his articles and Glenn Lyle's articles in the Kaicho News was so deemed to be anti-government. So yes, there is concern that people are scared or not scared, people are concerned what would be their lot if the PPP gets into government? But, but madam or, or gentleman, whoever sent that text, the will of the electorate has to be respected because guess what? It is because of what people were unhappy with that they voted them out. And it is what people are unhappy with the APNU AFC that they're voted out. And if the PPP comes into power and they don't do what they have to do, they will be voted out. It is the right of the masses that has to be respected. And Leonard, the final thing I'll say on this stead, I'm tired of hearing this, this thing about how much people, the extrajudicial killings. I have invited, and you know, it's, now is not the appropriate time to deal with it. Maybe after the elections we'll deal with it. I can refer people to excellent research done by the newspapers in Guyana on those extrajudicial killings, and I can tell you, not everybody, you will see when you read it yourself. Go and get it and read it. But ladies and gentlemen, no matter what, the governments must be voted out if they don't perform well. And that's the bottom line. The masses have spoken and we have to respect that. 
Well, one last um, reading before we go, maybe one more call or so. Uh, uh, Leonard, you, uh, why did Madam Chair vote on elections? Day? Did, he, did she not show a side that she would prefer? It indicated that uh, she would prefer a side. Um, in, interesting question, interesting observation. I would have seen that in the past. Uh, uh, I think it was uh, Steve Serge Bali. Not necessarily. Uh, not necessarily. Suppose she went to, look, she, by voting, you're not showing a side. By voting, you're exercising a right. Mm -hmm. You're exercising a franchise. How you know she didn't go in and spoil her vote? How you know she even voted or didn't leave? We don't know. That's why it's called secret. But you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, debate it. It's her right. Absolutely, Yoga. I think there's a quick call uh, that may be one or two. Call you on the air quickly. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you? Pretty good, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm calling from New Jersey, man. Wow. How is it over there? I am, uh, it's pretty nice. It's 80 degrees and it's a windy day, but I love your program. I got to tell you that. Thank you. All right. Could you I lower the volume? Could you lower the volume on your radio quickly, please? Okay, I'm going to be inside of my room because apparently... Okay, is it okay now? Yes, go ahead. Um, there are a couple of things. Uh, first of all, Mingo did something wrong, but no one feels accepting what Mingo did. Is no one feel being very culpable in being, you know, a liar, basically, of what he's doing? Go ahead, go ahead. And, and second, you guys, Region 4 has got the biggest population. Why not divide Region 4 into four regions for arrows, you know, you know, to do the count? In this way, there won't be time to manipulate the, um, you know, mm, mm -hmm. the list. Because, mm -hmm. you know, because when you did that, Mingo played sick, and they gave them time to fudge the numbers. And three, they're thirty-nine percent East Indian, four, they're thirty percent African. Why aren't the other persons not represented in GEOCOM? You can have six people <laughs> representing sixty percent of the population and thirty percent of the population is not represented. That's not representation. Thank you very much, dear sir, and uh, do have a pleasant rest of the day. To the people in New Jersey, we have a lot, I have a lot of friends there. A good day to you too, and uh, uh, you have a pleasant uh, weekend too, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Yog, uh, uh, I would want to hand it over to you now. Any closing remarks? Maybe address what a caller from New Jersey would have said. And obviously, uh, this weekend is pretty critical to the Guyanese people. On Monday, uh, what is exactly uh, what is it that we are going to see with regard to Kaito Radio? With some of the things that we should expect coming out from GCOM. Correct. Well, uh, by Monday, Leonard, we will not be on elections watch. We'll be on results watch because um, tomorrow by tomorrow evening, I think if they finish approximately 90 boxes today, you will have about 76 remaining for tomorrow. And if you do the, the you know, proportionate um, amount per hour, by, by four or five tomorrow, they should be finished. Don't forget, viewers and listeners, that is the recount will be finished, uh, not the tabulation. Hour, by, by the tabulation is another process that might go on for another Don't day. Forget. Thereafter, Mr. Lowenfield would have to do his thing. Now, Leonard, um, I want to say this. We, and I want to ask everybody, let us still be on the upbeat. Let us still be positive. Let us send positive vibes to the, 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 the chairman of Guyana Elections Commission. She is going to do what is her training and what is the right thing to do. In addition, Mr. Granger, I would like to call upon the president. Sir, if there was ever a time to speak, it is now. Sir, Mr. Granger, President David Granger, if there was ever a time to speak, sir, it is now. Please emerge from wherever you are and bring calm to this nation. Go with your own words, sir. Let us await the decision of GCOM. Thank you very much, Zay Yoga. We're going to be back with you on Monday, 1.30 p.m. sharp. We're going to be back with you at 7.30 on room 592. 
to get into the analysis of what would have transpired with regards to results 2020. According to Yoga, it's no longer elections uh, based on what we've seen right now. I want to say coming up very shortly after this, uh, after we would have closed, it would be Bollywood tunes. Uh, we have put that, uh, uh, pushed that back a little so we could bring you elections, what, special edition, because of the developments, uh, what is happening there at the Artichung Convention Center within hours the recount on the 32, uh, it's wrapping up uh, very quickly. And so uh, at this point in time, we are projecting tomorrow for a closure of that. So I want to say thank you very much for joining us. You've been uh, good listeners. You've been good watchers. And thank you for the feedback. We could not have read all the messages. We're going to continue improving. And with regards to Barbies, it's being fixed at the moment. Thank you very much, uh, callers, viewers, and listeners. And of course, thank you very much, Yog Mahadio.